Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Bill, and today is Fence Demolition Day. Uh, a couple years ago, we put a fence in around the main garden to kind of help keep everything contained and keep some of the big critters out, but it is really gotten long in tooth. You can see the old fence is a combination of some snow fencing we bought, some reclaimed gates we got from a nearby apple orchard, and some chicken wire. And when we put it up, it did the job, but it's just, it's, it hasn't held up well, and it's kind of drifting all over the place at this point. So we're going to remove the old fence and put in something a little more stable and aesthetically pleasing. Hey you, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we're here in Growing Zone 6B in New England. And I woke up this morning and realized that there is a week until the wedding. And I'm still in here like canning my beans. There have been a lot of beans. We've probably got something close to 30 jars of beans downstairs. And there's still a ton of beans hanging out on the vines that'll need another day or two to pick. So, but the vines are getting fragile. It's end of season on these babies. I just want them to look pretty for another week. One more week, man, one more week. Come on outside, I'll show you what's going on there. Y'all, I scored a golden seal plant down at Hardwick. These are some of the last plants we're gonna put in in the shady zone. I'll show you what we've done over there. I'm just blown away by how it's coming together. Um, so these folks are out here in the shade of the hedge. Yes, indeedy, it is hump o mulch season part two. Oh, the delicatas are finally bearing some fruit. There's at least one of them in there. And I see what might be a second one. So the garden itself is still pretty viney. Got beans still coming in. I'll probably do two more, three more harvests before our last frost. There will be a hops harvest soon. You can see they're getting pretty big. And there's some over here. Look like they're just about ready. I'm gonna give them a few more days and then I'm gonna start harvesting these. But we are a little ways away from chopping the whole thing down. We won't do that until October-ish. Got a lot of tomatillos still coming in. I've already done my first batch of salsa verde. I took the cucumbers out from the middle over there and I put peas in. I direct sowed some peas. So we'll see if they come up in time to bear fruit or anything, but they'll at least keep providing us with some greenery. Something took a few bites out of Oscar the cat-faced tomato who is completing their ripening up right here. It's a case of sowing next year's volunteers, I suppose. There are a ton of other Costaludos coming in over here. I found out these are the Costaludo Genovese, if they're what I planted last year. And there's a bunch of them coming in. They're just starting to blush in there too. Oh. And the one next to it appears to be absolutely loaded with fruit. They look like they're either San Marzano's or some Amish pastes. That said, who knows what they really are because almost certainly they have crossbred with other tomatoes that were out here last year and there's some kind of hybrid. So we'll see, but it looks like they're a good paste tomato. These sunflowers are just, oh my goodness, they are stealing my heart so hard. Even as a whole bunch of them are spent and we're waiting to uh, see how they do with pollination and seeds and feeding the birds. There are still tons and tons of blossoms that haven't even opened yet. And I am rooting for them to open like Sunday morning. 
We've been bringing in eggplant and tomatillos as well as beans. Um, and it's just looking a little gangly and wild out here. Just in love. Oh, I love the little path. That's what I was wondering about. I didn't know about this. I'm so thrilled to show you this. This is where the chicken coop was prior to this. Um, and I'm just, oh, turn around, turn around, turn around. It's so cute. Just look at this darling space. These are the perennials we planted. A lot of coral bells. Uh, there's lily of the valley, there's hosta, there's coleus. Later this week, I'll put in the golden seal and those other plants that are waiting for us in back. And if I have time, I'm going to move some of the lungwort, the pulmonaria, out of the back trails over to behind this. But man, with the mulch in, it just looks like a whole new space. It's just so sweet and inviting. And I trimmed those raspberry bushes so they're not overgrown and weird anymore. Yo, let me show you what the guys are doing with this fencing because, wow. Let's talk about fence, baby. So what's going on here? So the, the garden frames are actually really simple. They're just pressure treated two by fours that we stained and sealed so they'd be more resistant to the weather. They're put together with uh, frame heavy duty framing screws so they're they're secure but we can disassemble if we need to and then we're just stapling the chicken wire to it to uh, help keep the skunks and the groundhogs out I'm really pleased it was fairly inexpensive really easy to put together because they're all with the exception of one panel they're all exactly the same size so we could just knock them all out at once and they're easy to install. We dig a hole about a foot deep. The legs that extend down are beveled. Tap them in with a hammer till the bottom bar hits the ground and we're done. Mike is coming over. We're gonna, we're gonna get, be manly men and build things. Oh, he came over yesterday and you guys just knocked that out. We I got, can't believe half of this is done already. Yeah, we got just over half the fence installed yesterday. It only took us about 90 minutes to get the the fence panels installed the longest part of this is putting the fence on it's not hard it's just time consuming we want the the fencing nice and secure so it's just a lot of staples gotcha i see that you've been you spend a lot of time stretching this fence yeah we want it not super tight but taut enough that it doesn't wave and and wrinkle um, and something sturdy because I know the plants will climb on it. So I want something that the plants won't pull down or, or distort as they're, as they're growing on it. I wish I had done this two years ago. It is just, it looks so much better. The garden feels much more open and integrated into the yard now. Um, it feels lighter. It feels airy. So I'm really... I'm really pleased with, with the way it's coming along so far. The fence we had was a little over four feet tall and uh, it was originally chicken wire and then we put the snow fencing around it to help keep critters out and kind of help control everything. <laughs> um, and it worked, but it, it just, it never made me happy. It was never completely straight. It always wavered and tipped a little bit. And now we're doing, you know, the solid wood frames anchored into the ground and it's only three feet tall, which will keep most of the big critters out, which is our aim. And, and I can see over and it. And now Sue can see over the railing and she can even lean on the railing now. Which I really like fancy. it. Fancy. I, I now have a place to rest my coffee cup when I come out in the morning. Hey, hey. Sounds good to me. Hello. Hi. 
Okay, well, this down here, these are the start of uh, some schizophyllum uh, mushrooms. They are uh, they're wood decayers, and uh, they are good medicine. I mean good medicine in that you can make tea out of it. It's a good immune booster. Nice. Not unlike, uh, not unlike turkey tail mushrooms. Um, both are... Uh, both kind of grow parasitic, uh, like this you see on the on the log. And how big did it get? <clears throat> Not very big, maybe only about, say, I've never seen a cap larger than an inch wide. Okay, so let's keep. I'll keep an eye on these. For sure. They're flush up here. Yes, I can. Hello, Megan. What's up? How's stuff? Holding up the fence. Holla. Mm. It's holding me up. It's really what it's doing. Good enough. Mm. Maybe a little column, a little bit of column, column B. Mm. 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 I didn't really like that tool at first, the impact driver. And now, every time I have to put a screw in with a drill, I just hate it. Yeah, it's so much better, legitimately. Drill is for, for drilling, um, but the impact driver impacts while you screw in. So it pushes? Yeah, it like hammers on it. It's yeah, like a smaller version of a like a hammer drill that you would use for construction. A tiny friend on my funnel. If I am not mistaken, this is a black swallowtail caterpillar, and fennel is one of the things you plant if you want them, um, because apparently they love the flavor. looking at a rusty maize gill. Let me see if I can get it in focus. It is a wood decayer and a very pretty one at that. But if you see underneath, its gills are in a maze-like oh. pattern. Oh. What's going on? Just trying to get rid of the rocks there. There we go. Ah. Okay. All right. This is the last hole, isn't it? It is. Right, of course, all of the rocks in the last hole. I'm glad I noticed that. <laughs> and that's where we're at. The next couple of days are going to be um, some afternoon work around putting in the gates. And right now we're trying to decide how many gates we want to put where. Because um, there's two really good wide spaces and the question is does bill want to pull the riding lawnmower in and then be able to drive all the way out or is he cool with just backing out that's going to happen tomorrow or the day after um but yeah we're getting there we're getting there i want to get this out to you so you can see what's happening before the wedding thank you for hanging out with us while we got this fence put in and by we i mean Bill and Mike and Lib because wow. Um, 
and we'll catch you up after next weekend. Take care. I think What's going on? Somebody volunteered for snuggles. Hello bird friend. How's it going, Song? You got you got snuggled, I see. We were talking about you a minute ago. You're the only chicken I ever see walk backwards. Hey, pretty girl. Can I pet your floppies?